This is Joe with Joe'sAstrophoto.com. Tonight, we're going to capture the Orion Nebula. Tonight's one of the first nights in a long time where we haven't had a moon or any clouds. So I'm going to go for an LRGB capture of the Orion Nebula. I'm probably going to do this over the course of two to three nights, but tonight's the first night and I'm pretty excited about it. So it's about a quarter to five here, and it's getting cold. Uh, winter's coming, and I'm not ready for it yet. Uh, I got spoiled with uh, warm temperatures from the summer, and now coming back out in the winter time makes me want to buy a heater. <laughs> We're ready to connect to uh, Nina and get our target set up. The first thing we want to do is connect all devices. And of course we'll get the usual um, PHD2 error. So we'll connect PHD2. Connect them both, close it. And we'll start looping. All right. Mm. Let that go to the back and make sure that the guider's connected in Nina. And we can close this error. And we'll unpark the telescope and minimize that. Next thing we're going to do is go to our Sky Atlas and put in M42, which is the Orion Nebula. And we're going to first slew, then set for our frame assistant, and then come back and set as a sequence target. And while the framing assistant is, oh, it already loaded. That's great. Fantastic. And look at this perfect framing. We'll get the Running Man and the Orion Nebula in, in the same shot if everything goes well. So the next thing we'll do is go to sequencing and we'll set up our sequence. We're going to do 90 second exposures. And I think for um, luminance, we're going to start with 150. And we're going to dither every four frames. And We'll do uh, red, green, and blue next. And I think we'll start with 50 of each of those. Set this to blue and this to green. Now, if you look at the estimated finish time or start time, it's 619, but I won't be able to start imaging until almost um, 2200, 10 o'clock local time. And um, it's 1819, so I've still got about two hours. So I'll add two hours to the end of this, and it looks like it's going to be um, 440 in the morning. And I've got until about 530. So the other thing I want to turn on is to do an autofocus on start and after every filter. And the reason I'm doing that is because the temperature is going to continue to drop tonight and 
as the temperature drops, um, I would, I think that the focus changes, well, I know at least with my setup, the focus changes with the temperature drop. So I'm going to have it do a autofocus per filter. And we're going to 440. So I'm, I'm looking at this and it says 241, but I'm thinking 441 in my head. So I can add um, a little bit more red, maybe five more exposures and five more blues. And it looks like I can add five more greens. And that's gonna bring it up to 507, which is pretty good. And this is just one night. I plan to do this for um, two or even three nights um, to add more integration time. So for the red, green, and blue with only 55 exposures, I need to dither more than every four frames, which will also add a little bit to the time. So about 5.07 is when it'll finish. It's about 7.30 at night, and you can see where my telescope's pointing. I've got it set to point for uh, the Orion Nebula, and right now it's hitting about three quarters of the way up the wall of the observatory. Um, about 10 o'clock tonight, so in about three hours, or a little less than three hours, it should be pointing just above the top here. It's 10.04 here, and um, we're going to do a plate solve and see what we have. Let's click on the image. Looks like it made a match and now it's syncing up the telescope. You can actually see the nebula in the um, guiding scope. go. Before we get started, I wanted to cool the camera and I just wanted to show you um, the screen where the cooler power starts to ramp up and you can see that on this graph. And then on this graph you can see the temperature starting to drop. So here's our sequence. Um, it's 115 luminance and then 50 each of red, blue, and green. And if we start right now, it will be done at 536. We're going to be cutting it a little close, especially with the autofocus. So I'm going to turn this down for tonight to 110. Otherwise, I'll be clipping a lot of the green sub exposures tomorrow morning. So now you can see it's starting to do its autofocus of the luminance filter. Two hours later. Well, it's just after midnight and everything seems to be going well, except that I forgot about the North Torrid meteor showers and the majority of all of my pictures have two, three, four streaks of meteors in them. It's pretty cool in a way, but in another way I'm hoping that Pixinsight will remove the the meteor streaks, like it does some of the satellites. Just under 12.30 a.m. on night number two of capturing the Orion Nebula. 
this is the latest image of the sub that's up on my screen right now. Uh, these are 90 second subs and another one's getting ready to finish right now. Well it's morning and I've gotten some amazing exposures barring the Northern Torrid meteor shower. I've got uh, the last three or four here um, are too washed out. They happened too late in the morning. So that was a fun couple nights capturing the Orion Nebula, especially with the meteor shower that came through. If you like this kind of videos, please consider subscribing and stick around and I'll show you the finished image of what we captured.